archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. A beautiful day breaks in Arunachal as the sun rises over the dark and mystifilled forests that cover the mountains. It's a land rich in forest wealth, timber, flowers, orchids. The State Forest Research Institute is carrying on a lot of research on orchids, their breeding, development, micropropagation of native as well as suitable exotic species. Biological diversities are studied and a database is created on forestry and allied subjects. A scientist of the institute explains the different properties and market status of the varieties of orchids. This is one of the Cymbidium hybrids we are having in our, uh, you know, state. And this has actually been developed through, a, you know, hybridization, in the culture, in our tissue culture laboratory. And after about uh, three years of time, this has started giving flowers. And each flower in the cut flower market, yeah, you know, is, uh, costs about 100 to 150 rupees each. And at their farm gate, they get a minimum 20 to 25 rupees. And that is how a sort of, uh, uh, you know, cut flower trade, a farming of orchids can develop in our state. And uh, all efforts are on by our institute to transfer this technology in order to the young entrepreneurs, uh, educated, uh, unemployed youth, and also the progressive farmers. One of the Amisbury, Simidum Amisbury, and uh, here you can see how the lip is variegated. Depending upon the flower and the variegation, in the market, uh, actually, the prices are fixed. And uh, in the national and international market, it commands a good price. And there are different types of clones here, you know, like a rainbow color. You get different types. And each one has its own demand, depending upon the occasion, whether it's a marriage or it's a, a ceremonial reception of VIPs or a birthday. Depending upon that, there are demands. and uh, that, that is how uh, these simidiums are called the kings in the floricultural uh, trade and they have a greatest demand in the national and international market. Arunachal is uh, in fact uh, an abode of orchids and a paradise of orchids. Now we have the rarest of the rare orchids uh, like the lady slippers, scientifically they are called uh, the Papiopedalum. And there are, uh, you know, nine species in our country. Out of that, we have three of them occurring uh, within our state. And one of them is uh, the Ferianum and another is the Venustum. This is called uh, popularly Lady Slipper Orchid in allusion to its, you know, the structure. Just if you look at this particular structure of the flower, which looks like a, you know, lady's uh, bathroom, slipper. See, in allusion to that, this has been referred to as uh, ladies slipper orchid or uh, this is also called the lost lady slipper orchids. For example, this one in the bed which you are seeing here, this has a simple leaf, green leaves. Whereas here, 
This one is a variegated leaf. And that is how you can distinguish these flowers. Orchids are a highly evolved group of plants and they occupy a top position in the plant kingdom. Their habits are diverse. Their flower structure bizarre. They are found on the ground, rocks and trees, in almost all types of forests, from the sea level to the snowy peaks. This is uh, in fact uh, uh, available more or less in the endemic to, uh, you know, Arunachal Pradesh in West Kamen district and adjoining Bhutan. And, uh, you know, the first find of this particular orchid was offered by Sanders of London 2,000 pounds per plant. And you can imagine the, the value of this particular orchid. And today, in our uh, the laboratory, we have been able to propagate it in a large scale and we are making it available to the people in a cheaper rate. And we have been able to establish a, a, a conservatory, conserva conservancy, if you can call it, and also referred to as a lady slipper sanctuary in Tehran, nearly for about two hectare area, we have been able, you know, able to introduce this particular rare orchid, which is supposed to be under Wildlife Conservation Act. Uh, you know, the protection for elephants and tigers, which is given under the Wildlife Conservation Act, same thing is given to this particular group of orchids also. The work being done at the Institute is truly exemplary in the preservation and propagation of these endangered and endemic species. Many of these species have medicinal properties, useful even in the treatment of cancer. These are rare, found only in the inaccessible parts of Arunachal Pradesh. More than 450 varieties are medically useful, explains another scientist. You are seeing here a very important medicinal plant a tree that is called Himalayan yew, the taxus baketa. This is the taxus baketa, which is a taxol that is meant for treating cancer. So this is specifically used for the treatment of breast and ovarian cancer. The plant is uh, so how it is being used. A drug called taxol is extracted from the leaves of this plant. This is the source of that taxol and that is extracted. This uh, medicine is being now manufactured in India yes. or? Yes. Earlier the plant, the whole plant, raw material used to go out of India, but finding the potential and the threats to the population, plant population, government of India has restricted or banned the export of this one. Earlier to that, we have another species which also yields the taxol which I mentioned earlier, that is Amentotaxus assamicus. This Amentotaxus assamicus occurs only in Arunachal Pradesh, that too in the Lohit district. There is no other place. It is a highly endangered species which is occurring in this district. But we found that on analysis of the leaves, these leaves also yield taxol. And another thing, you will find that more leaf production here. So maybe that of exploitation or multiplication of this one for production of taxol would be ideal and we should go for some farming sort of thing and not depending on the wife. This is called uh, Peyas Tanker Ville. You know, this is one of the ground orchids so fantastic to look at. This is the first flowering. You can see on the background, on that uh, this particular uh, mm. uh, orchid mm. leaves. Mm. And per plant, there are three, four flowering inflorescences coming out. Mm. And each plant bears, you know, a very long, about this one, one and a half meter tall. This one? Yeah. Yeah. One, one and a half meter tall flowering spike with number of flowers. And it is, uh, in fact, a feast you know, to see when they are in bloom. In the natural conditions of Arunachal Pradesh, when you just trek through the jungles, you encounter occasionally this kind of, uh, you know, fantastic scene. And uh, this has the greatest demand. And I have been able to propagate it and uh, also hybridize it. And uh, this is one of our assets in Arunachal Pradesh.
Mishmitita is the local name of this variety. It is supposed to be useful in the treatment of anything from malaria to cholera, an extremely rare variety. This is another uh, medicinal plant yes. or slightly higher elevation that is called Rupia cordifolia botanically and is also known as Manjista in the medicinal Ayurvedic parlour. So this particular plant, the stem root eel, a orange yellow dye, you see the medicine septilin has this as an ingredient. You see it is for bronchial problems. Most of the Ayurvedic medicines which is having colour orange red color and what happened this is used for coloring their clothes traditionally as the director what has prompted you to do all these things as you know, this orchid is mostly epiphytic. It's living on the trees. There are trees today also. Along with the vanishing of the jungle, it will also take place to go away, depart at us on a day. So as soon as we find this flow of action is going on by nature or by man-made uh, uh, behavior, so we have to take care of it, how to preserve one of the main objectives to preserve biodiversity in the state throughout the world to make a balance sheet of oxygen, what, what is called ozone layer, etc. etc. So, with this aim in view, we are just collecting those jungle orchids which are going away, departing us along with the jungle, is being kept ex situ condition in the greenhouse, which is more or less not exactly natural but a, a, a kind of artificial house where we can protect them from storms from dust from high heat and for reproduction you are keeping it uh, again uh, we are putting it here as soon as we are go for the laboratory work how to multiply it we are taking care of tissue culture so tissue culture but can you tell me sorry to that uh, what is the number of species rare species that you have developed and you are keeping it here Yes, in case of orchid, our development is my scientists have built it to a great extent. That is, 19 hybrid they have produced from the jungle orchid, and out of that, seven are very commercially important. An official explains the work of the tissue culture laboratory. So this is the tissue culture lab where uh, you know, aseptic conditions are required. That means very clean environment in which uh, the selected plant material, uh, you know, the, supposing a hybrid or a selected plus tree or a you know, hybrid orchid can be multiplied into a you know, number of plant. For one plant, we can make millions of plantlets and uh, this can be you know used for distribution to the, the yeah, local uh, people as well as for developing a uh, sort of uh, trade based on the biodiversity autoclave in other words a controlled pressure cooker in which we can uh, you know sterilize the, the you know medium in which a plant can be grown for growing a plant, you require a number of micro and macronutrients, and uh, we have to sterilize this plant so that the bacteria, virus, and such kind of diseases do not affect the plant growth inside the culture room. 
The institute has a number of facilities, laboratories for forest genetics, soil science, seed testing, a herbarium, a taxonomy laboratory, and two tissue culture laboratories, among other things. Hybridization and the multiplication of orchids are done here. It is possible to produce thousands of plants from one. Local farmers are provided with plants from here. The vegetation of Arunachal Pradesh can be divided into four broad climatic categories and six types of forests. There are tropical evergreen forests, tropical semi-evergreen forests, subtropical forests, pine forests, and bamboo forests. These occur up to an elevation of 900 meters above the sea level. The territory receives heavy rainfall from both the monsoons and holds more than 80% of relative humidity in the atmosphere. This favors the luxuriant growth and occurrence of more than 550 species of orchids out of the 1,100 species found in India. They are considered as gems in the field of floriculture and are a favorite haunt of butterflies. We are at Nam Dhapa National Park, an inaccessible area of Arunachal Pradesh, which boasts of deep valleys and high hill ranges running in different directions. A flock of hornbills takes to their wings on our arrival. At Miao, the headquarters of the Tiger Project, a full-fledged museum has been started with an interesting collection of animal, bird and reptile specimens. A special attraction is the full skeleton of a python, found so rarely.
There are divergent opinions on the extent of threat to the forest from poachers and other sources. Let us hear the field director of the Tiger Project, Mr. D. N. Singh. Namdafa is unique because of two factors. First is that it is the only protected area in India where you can find four major cats: tiger, leopard, snow leopard, and clouded leopard. This is unique from the biological point of view also. Second is in this protected area, you will find the change of vegetation from tropical rainforest to alpine. About the major problem, manpower is the biggest headache, biggest problem for us. For 1985 square kilometer area, we are not having sufficient manpower, and we have problem of encroachment also. We have problem of poaching also, but with limited manpower, we are unable to control it. Poaching, an enormous problem that conservators are facing the world over. So many ways have been devised to counter poachers. So many projects undertaken, campaigns made, but the problem remains. In India, the problem has assumed massive proportions, so much so that one tiger is being killed a day, which augurs very badly for the existing tiger population. Mm -hmm.